Well, hello there, and welcome to Alan's Audacity Studio. You're looking at a blank screen in my Audacity. I haven't done anything yet, but I want to demonstrate maybe a little bit of how you can go about doing what we're calling the uh, single sound composition. It's a lot of experimentation, and actually I haven't really done what I'm going to demo before, so I'm pretty much making it up as I go. I'm going to do what I usually do first, just to make sure my... Um, recording sources are good. Uh, you may not be using recording. Uh, the uh, demo we're going to do is more or less using imported sounds. So I've already saved a sound that I want to use uh, for my project and I've got this thing I call a harp. And it's me pretty much just making some bad harmonica sounds. So listen to that first. So there's sort of a few notes and maybe it's more than a single sound. And the whole point of this is to experiment what you can do with, this is a three second sound clip, by maybe copying it, duplicating it, changing the pitch, uh, building some things up in layers. And so the way you go about this, this is relatively new for you. I sometimes try to think first about my background and maybe what I want. And I've got kind of this heavy breathing thing here at the end. That So I may just decide to use that little segment. So I'm going to copy that, and this is another little technique. I'm going to leave this original sound file here in a window as sort of my palette. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to dip into it with my audio paintbrush. Uh, but I'm going to go to a new uh, Audacity document, and I can actually just paste this thing in there. And uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit with my arrow tools, and so I got that. And I'm going to start to experiment. So first what I may want to do is under the effects menu, and this is where all the fun happens is, uh, I'm going to change, let's say, if I change the pitch, I'm going to change this to a lower pitch. Now, when I change the pitch, it actually makes it longer because it stretches out in time. And you see it's a completely different sound now. You hear that? And you get that kind of long tail. And maybe I'll want to just um, take this part and just repeat that a few times. So I'm just copying and pasting uh, just to make a sound background. Let's see how this sounds now. And actually, for some reason, well, I ended up copying the shift pitch port and I got my original, but big deal, it's just a demo. Uh, because it's maybe uh, in the background, uh, I maybe may want to make it a little bit quieter. So I'm using my envelope tool here. Uh, you could change the pitch, but I like the envelope tool because I can change it. So I just want it to be soft in the background. So there, I've got maybe one track that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go back to my harp sound, and maybe I'm going to... So I'm going to use the whole track this time. I'm going to copy this. It's just like copying and pasting words. I'm going to come back to Audacity. Uh, because I don't want to mess with this track, I'm actually going to mute it for now. And I'm going to do, uh, under Tracks, I'm going to add a new stereo track. I think it would work if you just did the, the paste again. But I'm just going to go to Edit and Paste. And so there's my sound again. And because I want to do uh, sort of extended things, I'm going to copy it, and maybe I'm going to paste it again. Uh, it paste starts where you leave your cursor. If I do a little bit of overlap, it's not going to leave any gaps, which is I want. Sometimes you miss, um, you know, I might just put it there. And you see that brown line? That's actually two different segments. I like to keep my things neat, so you can just copy right across that. It's a boundary line. It's like between two different chunks. Go to Edit, Clip Boundaries, and Join. So that's going to act like a single track. So I got... So I got two iterations of that wailing harmonica. It just sounds like a blues master, right? I'm going to copy that again. Maybe I'm going to start squeezing my tracks up so I can see a little bit more what I'm doing. Now, this doesn't change the sound, this just lets me see more in what's my view. 
Go to tracks, gonna add another new stereo track. You can add lots of tracks. Come back here, and I'm gonna start my cursor a little bit offset. And in fact, I'm gonna go and still use my time shift tool and uh, see what happens if I do something like this. So I have two tracks, they're both the same, but they're on top of each other, but they're offset in time. So uh, you get a little bit of a stereo or a um, chorus effect. And I, so I could play with uh, where that happens and maybe I'll get a different sound. I just shifted that a little bit more. And so it's a little bit of finagling, a little bit of seeing um, where the sound um, waveforms line up might appeal or work differently. Again, and you know, again, because I shrunk that first one, they didn't necessarily look the same, but just to swing it back, you can see it's the same waveform. So that second one, maybe I want it to uh, be in a different key. So the first one when I did um, on the background check, I shifted the tempo and it stretched it out. When I use the uh, shift change pitch, it actually will keep the same um, uh, tempo. So the length of it won't change, but it's going to change its pitch. So maybe I want to go um, up um, from a C sharp. Uh, you can see it's actually doing some notes here. So that's a little bit crazy. And I can preview this. A little bit too chipmunky, so I'm going to just drag the slider down here. So maybe somewhere in between. So I do that effect. Now I change. I don't know what exactly is going to happen here, folks. So I don't know whether that's interesting or not, but I'm starting to see that I can do um, a lot of little things uh, with just one sound. Let me go back here and just play. Let me grab it just a little clip. So this one sound, this hmm, I can see the shape of that. Maybe that could be sort of a rhythmic thing. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to mute that track again. I'm going to make another new track. You go crazy with your tracks. And this one, um, I know that it's, that sound occurs at this place in time. It's about 1.5 seconds. Um, what would happen if I just maybe started right, uh, maybe from the beginning? From the beginning, and I'm just going to do boom. Oh, mono track. I made a mistake. All right. I actually needed a new stereo track. See, I make a mistakes all the time. It's a stereo sound and I'm just going to paste it in there and then maybe I'm going to come out in uh, time here and I'm going to um, just do that. And now I've got these things spaced. So I could try to eyeball it but I can also just come in and uh, do this. And so you see I'm setting up something that might be a little more rhythmic. So what does this one track sound like? So I got something that's a little bit syncopated. I don't know the musical terms. What happens if, what kind of effects can I put on this? How about a phaser? I don't even know what that is. Doesn't even sound like it did anything. Don't like that effect. How about, um, I don't know what would sound good. I'm gonna reverb this. Maybe sounds like it's uh, in a little bit of a tunnel. I could take one of those and I could make, uh, how about if I change the pitch of that and I go down with it. So I've got, so I got that third one where I went down and maybe I want to do the same thing to this one. 
you notice when I go back, I could just go back into the thing, but I could also just repeat that same effect applied to a different segment. So now, let's see how this works. So as you can see, I got some sort of really terrible steam pipe thing going. Um, and just for fun, let's turn all my tracks back on. Let's see what I got. It's going to be a little bit noisy. I don't know what this is or whether it's significant, but I could go on quite a bit with applying these changes. And still, I'm working with uh, one basic sound. Uh, so it's a little bit repetitive right now. Maybe this next one. What would happen if I did a uh, reverse on that? A little bit of a crazy sound. Go back and play the whole thing. Sounds a little bit like, I don't know, someone who needs to get some help. That is uh, kind of a quick demo of just messing around, cutting and pasting, shifting pitch, uh, moving things up and down in, in tracks. A couple little techniques, uh, keeping again, I didn't really use it too much, but if I wanted to go back to my original sound, because maybe in my file that I'm building, I've just messed it up so much that I've lost that original sound. I still have this one here. So I could again just take this little bit again, maybe this bit. So that's still available to me to go back into my uh, master file here. And maybe I'm just going to uh, put it uh, on the ends of this one and just go out with some bleep bleep bleepings. Pretty exciting. Toot, toot, toot. And there you go. That really, I don't know if that explains or helps anything uh, with your Audacity editing. You might never have to do anything like this. The purpose of this uh, activity is not necessarily to produce something that's going to boost your portfolio, etc. But just to give you a little bit of an understanding about what's even possible uh, in Audacity. Again, as you work on the other assignments, which uh, are um, doing a commercial for yourself or doing an interview with yourself, that some of these techniques, maybe you won't be doing a sound effect sort of bit, uh, but learning how to manipulate the text uh, in this manner uh, should give you the ability to do more than just record into a microphone, to actually make something uh, with different layers of sound. So there you go. That's my messy sound lab. See you later.